Hello everyone again. This is Christopher uh, with the Forest Pharmacy and wanted to show y'all uh, a cloned wild golden reishi that I uh, just recently found. Uh, it was a really beautiful one. It was extremely white uh, like the whole cap was even though um, some of the other ones growing around it were more reddish uh, in color. So I wanted to show you like I cloned this mushroom, so I basically took a piece of the tissue. So this is tissue culture. Uh, I always do at least two or two plates. Most of the time, if I have the plates, and I do three. So you can see these two. Um, really amazing, beautiful rhizomorphic mycelium. You especially see that one. Uh, and this is the reason that I do more than one, because this one. Uh, literally same chunk of flesh um, that or same chunk of tissue that I took out uh, did not did not really do very much at all this one jumped first so this is going to be the one that I select this one um, you can see the difference in how much this one has ran and how much this one has ran so I like the more aggressive ones that's what I usually select for and um, so this is Ganoderma curtisii and it's more of a white golden reishi, but it's not a it's not a different subspecies or anything. So uh, culture or clone or tissue culture or whatever you want to put there. This was done on the 14th, and today's the 21st. So one week, and that's what's going on. So that's pretty great. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to share that with y'all. So I'm gonna be inoculating some grain with this today, and we're gonna see how that grows out. Uh, we have a petri plate today of Shimofuri Hiratakis and so what I'm going to be doing is inoculating the grain that we have here in front of the flow hood. So I'm going to uh, do a quick, quick transfer of colonized auger into some sterilized grain. So I always, always try to work as close to the flow of the hood as possible. And the reason I pull these back is in case if anything falls off the outside of the bag, it doesn't get lifted up this side of the bag and potentially fall into that one. And then when I'm done, I scoot it back up really close to the hood. Um, just always assume that everything is contaminated. Just always assume that everything if it's not inside of a bag or inside of a petri plate, is contaminated. And then we scoot it up. I alcohol my hands off quite often for my gloves. So now I take the parafilm off. So this flow hood doesn't sit flush. I actually like my my table to be flush with the bottom of the filter of the flow hood. Since this one does not sit flush, oftentimes I'll put a petri plate there, and then I will set the plate on top of this, keeping it super close, put another one there, back this up slightly, take the lid off. This scaffold has already been sterilized in the back of the incinerator and then quenched in the alcohol. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cut, and you notice like this is the inoculation point on the on the plate. So what I'm gonna do is, don't get too close. Um, I'm gonna cut, especially this leading edge, because it's growing really fast, and you kind of want to ride that mycelial wave as much as possible. So I'll cut it into these wedges, and then once the wedges are cut, and don't worry about it if the scaffold pulls some of the mycelium off. It still, it still has mycelium on it, even though you can't see it. Um, and then we'll pick it up. I always tilt it towards the hood, just so it blows everything. The air flow blows off. Grab wedges of auger. For you smokers out there, pretend like you're dumping off ashes. Um, it's a great way to flick them off. I usually put five to seven, something like that, wedges longer into each bag. They stick together. Oftentimes they'll they'll split apart 
once um, once they go in there. That's it. And then I immediately put my scaffold back in the back of the incinerator. Don't leave it for more than 10 seconds because <clears throat> it becomes um, really red hot and it's just it's not fun. Uh, and then I quench it, but I don't quench it completely off. I, I let it stay warm so that it can um, so that it can evaporate the uh, water that's in the alcohol afterwards. And then I, next, I immediately wrap my petri plate back up because I do not want it to get contaminated. And then I will um, I'll impulse seal these bags and like you know. Different colors for different different types of mushrooms. So this is the first generation grain. So this is the Shima Fairy Hirataki, which is always this aqua color. It's just our system. And then I put a one up here for the first generation. And then the um, the wedges of auger get shaken around. Oftentimes I don't do I don't do that until I finish all the bags, but just for demonstration purposes, um, I'm doing that. I don't really like shaking things up until everything's sealed up and closed because I don't want potential other contaminants ending up going into the bags. So that's that. Then I'll set them on the shelf and they'll stay there to incubate until they're ready to uh, ready to use.